them off the couch. I'm flat. I'm sitting now on my bum with my legs flat. And when I've pulled him off the couch, he's on me thighs, on me, and I'm trying to wake him up and all this mad. I'm just crying, screaming to God. God, don't take me, brother. That's me words. Don't take me, brother. So anyway, Billy's mates with me, me and Rossiter. And instead of focusing on me brother, his mate, allegedly, he's running around the house looking for his drugs and his stash, what Billy had for him. So while I'm tending to me brother, who's put a bullet, who's, who's done himself in the head with a catalyzer gun, his so-called best mates running around the house finding his drugs. And where Billy had used uh, a firearm, uh, the ambulance wouldn't come. It was me that phoned the ambulance, not his best mate. I'm, I'm ringing the ambulance while I'm sending me brother. I'm only 14. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But because I've mentioned there was a firearm used in the call to the ambulance, they wouldn't come to the address until our um, response had cleared it. So I'm, I'm, eventually, I've gone out the front door screaming with an ambulance and it's parked at the bottom of Pulford Street on Walton Breath Road. Our Billy used to live in the middle of Pulford Street. The ambulance is parked at the bottom of Pulford Street refusing to come up to the house and take Billy the ambulance. They're waiting for an ARV. I've made the call 20 minutes ago. The ARV weren't coming, I believe, on purpose because it was a G. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Anyway, five minutes, ten minutes, no arm response. Normally they're in a flash, people. You know what they're like. The air of a gun thing going off, they're there on the scene in a flash. For some reason, it took them half an hour to get from Wavertree to Anfield. You know it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So I'm fuming now. Next minute, Billy's bird's pulled up outside the house with his... With a, with young Billy in the car, only a kid then, proper young kid. Um, I've ran out and I've, as I've started dragging our Billy out, out of the house, you know, to get him into the car to take him to hospital. The ARV and the ambulance have seen me dragging him out the house and because I've pulled him away from the scene, they could do the assessment easier because now he's not in the house. They could just seal the house off and attend to Billy. So the fact that I pulled him out the house without me realising give them the opportunity to get him. And took him to the hospital. That was it. He was placed in a coma for three and a half months. I think I said on a podcast time ago, three and a half years. I got the figures wrong, but three and a half months he was in a coma for in Vizakli Neurological Centre and um, he said he weren't going to survive where he'd done himself this idea with the catalyzer gun it's a bolt so the bolt comes out so the bolts went right in and come out do you understand and left and left mess in there so what they've had to do was operate on him so they've cut a square out of his skull up here right along here and down here got in and done what they were done. That was in like the first week. And then he was in a coma for three and a half months. And then he's come through and the doctor said it's a miracle. We don't know how he survived this. Cause they were asking me ma to turn it off and that. But she never, so he's pulled through. So when he's pulled through, um, he's had to go through a lot of therapy and a lot of like rehabilitation to have him speaking again. Learn a speech, learn to talk, learn to identify things, all that stuff. And when he got to a, a, a good place where he could go back home and that, they give him a set diet. No drugs, no drink, um, a certain type of food to eat, what foods not to eat. Because he developed off the back of that um, the highest level of epilepsy. 
And they said to him, if you don't use this and you don't do this and you don't do that, the effects of the epilepsy upon yourself will be very, very mild. But if you don't live life accordingly now, you're going to feel the full force of epilepsy. So basically, fair few months he was sweet. But the same girl that basically drove him into that mindset on a come down off cocaine and made him react like that was on him. So straight away when he's back with this thing, he's back drinking, he's back snorting, and he's not having a healthy lifestyle. So within six months of that, the epilepsy's appeared. And what's happening is, if you know what epilepsy is, you'll know it comes in stages like different levels. So Billy had the level where he could be asleep at night, calm, and then all of a sudden from nowhere, bam, he's vaulting. And I mean, this eye off the bed. And as he's doing that, he's chomping on his cheeks. So he's ripping his gums open. And because he's vaulting up and down off the bed, he's, he's falling off the bed most nights now. And, and what happens with an epilepsy fit is basically it prevents oxygen getting to your brain. And then you go into an epileptic fit because you've got a lack of oxygen up here. If that makes sense. Or you have the fit and then the consequences of that fit is a lack of oxygen up here. And how long you get that lack of oxygen for depends on what damage is going on. Now I'm in prison when all this starts kicking in properly for him. You know, I was out when it all started, but he went, he was coping with his sweet. Then I've gone to jail and it's like everything's gone to the whole family, if you like. Do you understand? Everything sort of showed its true colours when I was disappeared. Does that make sense? And they all just went mad. <laughs> So he ended up doing this vault and this epileptic fit. So I get a photo of him every so often. You know, I like updates of my brothers, see how they are. Da, 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 da. And with me photos, I could see after, because I'd, I'd, my ma would say he's had another fit or he's had another fit or he's had another fit. And these are the things you've got to deal with in prison. All this family, tr all this family sadness that's getting created on the back of what you've done. Because that's what it was. Do you understand? So. When I'm looking at his photos, you can see him resembling someone who's got like Down syndrome. So you could you, you could see him when he was younger, athletic, square jaw, bang, going through his life. Then he has this fit, and then after this fit, every time he has another fit, an episode, the lack of oxygen to his brain was making him become less able, less, um, and I believe that was a, a big thing in his decision making, because I just believe he didn't want his kids to see him in a wheelchair slobbering and, you know, that sort of stuff, because that's the way it was going, that, that, that was the deterioration, every time he had this type of episode, the possibility of him ending up in a wheelchair and slobbering and not able to feed himself was becoming more um, was becoming more of a reality. And I believe he just didn't want his kids to have the last image of their dad as someone who's weak. Because you ain't a weak man. Had kid, our Billy, mate. You know, drugs and drink got old and then that's it. But that's what made me um, That's what made me go off track within a year I'm in jail. Within half a year, mate, I'm doing eighteen months detained in a while why. That that was my first ever prison sentence. And what happened with that with, with your older brother going missing at that age, it, it, it takes away the security and protection that your older brother used to bring so you've got to all of, all of a sudden start becoming the older brother of the family so we all looked up to Billy and then Billy's just gone so now I've got to take his position does that make sense? so they all look up to me now 
And it was like the responsibility of an adult at such a young age. Because our parents didn't look after us, we looked after ourselves, if that makes sense. And he'd done all that a year before I got out of custody, unlived himself. I had a year left off my 18 year sentence. I'd had all my paroles knocked back for security reasons. I was refused me cat D. Well, he sent me to a cat D, then took it straight back off me three days later, sent me back to closed conditions. I had one year left on my sentence, and I was a free man. Do you understand what I'm saying? I applied to go to my brother's funeral and they refused me permission to go to my brother's funeral. So I couldn't even like... Thank you.